Thank you for joining me on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Total Synthesis episode, we'll take a look at the total synthesis of talotisamine by the Inoue group. There's a lot to go through, so let's get right to it. As a brief introduction, talotisamine is a C19 diterpenoid alkaloid natural product that was isolated from aconitum, a plant that's also called monk's hood or wolf's bane, and this target has been shown to have potassium channel inhibition activity as well as antiarrhythmic effects. It has a daunting hexacyclic ring system composed of the A, B, C, D, E, and F rings. It can also be drawn in this alternative three-dimensional representation. The first retrosynthetic simplification the authors proposed was based on work from Weisner, who showed that an acetylation reduction sequence can be used to fragment the F ring. Alternatively, in the synthetic direction, mercury acetate could be employed to reform the F ring. If we apply some additional functional group interconversions retrosynthetically, we can arrive at this intermediate, which might be seen as the product of a skeletal rearrangement from this type of precursor, which would enable access to the BCD ring system in the forward direction. This simplified intermediate was proposed to arise from a diels alder reaction of this type of starting material, which in turn might be accessed using alkynylation of a ketone intermediate. This ketone, containing the A and E rings, was proposed to come from cyclohexenone in an ambitious retrosynthetic simplification. Reducing this plan to practice, the authors started from cyclohexenone and carried out a conjugate silylation. This is a strategic first step for at least two reasons. First, an enantioselective variant of this reaction has already been developed by the Hoveda group, so if this can be used as a starting material for the total synthesis, that solves the problem of how to make the synthesis asymmetric. Secondly, the silyl group can be used as an inert surrogate for a hydroxyl group, which can be accessed by the fleming tamau oxidation. Continuing on, the ketone was elaborated into a beta-ketoester using a Claisen condensation. This beta-ketoester, sitting as the enol, was elaborated on the other side using Manders reagent in another Claisen condensation. Now, the authors performed a double manic reaction using formaldehyde and ethylamine. This resulted in a diastereomeric mixture of the alpha and beta silanes, which were assigned using the nosy correlations between the protons shown. These types of 2D NMR assignments were used throughout the synthesis to assign diastereomers, and I won't show all of them, but I will show a few examples. The diastereomeric mixture of alpha and beta, or down and up, silanes could be treated with ethereal HBF4, followed by TFA, which was used to protonate and thereby protect the tertiary amine, and then peracetic acid to execute a fleming to mao sequence, resulting in the formation of a diastereomeric mixture which was heavily enriched in favor of the more thermodynamically favorable beta diastereomer. This diastereo enrichment was proposed to occur through a retroaldol-aldol process, which was possible once the hydroxyl group was installed. This diastereomeric mixture could be TBS protected to afford another mixture of diastereomers, which were assigned using these nosy correlations. Now, this ketone could be treated with an appropriately substituted phenylacetylene pronucleophile in combination with ethyl magnesium bromide, to carry out an alkynylation in a non diastere selective fashion. This pronucleophile, incidentally, arises from orthovanillin by carrying out a MOM protection followed by treatment with the Bessman O'Hara reagent to convert the aldehyde into an alkyne. Getting back to the route, the tertiary alcohol could be activated as the thiocarbonate, which is a reaction that returns some of the alpha hydroxy diastereomer of the starting material in the product mixture. The thiocarbonate, which was obtained as a diastereomeric mixture, was carried through a barton macombi deoxygenation using tributyl tin hydride and V40, which is an alternative to AIBN. This process provided the product shown, where the alkyne had successfully been appended to the AE ring fragment. The internal alkyne present in this intermediate could be hydrogenated with palladium on carbon, and the methyl ester in the southeast could be reduced with dibel, which avoided reduction at the more hindered ester. Then, sodium HMDS and iodomethane could be used to methylate the resulting primary alcohol. The diastereomer shown on the left, which was obtained in 49% over three steps, is the one they carried on. Before we get to another key step, we need to do some protecting group manipulations and functional group interconversions, so I'm going to run through these quickly. Tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride was used to remove the TBS group from the secondary alcohol. Sodium hydride and iodomethane were used to convert it into a methyl ether. Dibel was used to reduce the methyl ester into a primary alcohol, and DMP was used to bring it up to an aldehyde. Now, a tebiolefination could be employed to convert the aldehyde into a terminal alkene. Then, using ethereal BF3 and dimethyl sulfide, they removed the MOM group from the pendant aromatic ring. At this point, for reasons we'll discuss momentarily, they found that it was advantageous to install a bromine on the aromatic ring using the conditions shown. 
To carry out the deals alder step that the authors proposed during the retrosynthesis, they used HCl to keep the amine protonated while diacetoxy iodobenzene, also called phenylidine diacetate or PETA, was used to carry out an oxidative dearomatization to give the diene an intermediate. This was able to be heated to carry out the intramolecular diels alder reaction, resulting in this diastereomeric mixture of products. Here, it's worth pointing out that taking the same approach with a substrate not bearing the bromine was significantly less successful, which the authors proposed is because of an intermolecular dimerization process that's more competitive when a bromine's not present on the substrate. The diastereoselectivity of this reaction was rationalized by the proposal that diastereomer A, the major product, can be formed through a chair-like transition state, whereas diastereomer B, the minor product, would be formed through a higher-energy boat-like transition state. This mixture of diastereomers was subjected to a radical debromination with triphenylten hydride and AIBN, giving these two products. Carrying on the diastereomer on the left, Dival was used to reduce the ketone in 3.2 to 1 diastereoselectivity. Then, treatment with triflic anhydride gave the secondary alkyl triflate and 63% yield over two steps. Now they were ready for another key step, the skeletal rearrangement. They found that using DBU and DMSO at 120 degrees, they could arrive smoothly at this product, which contained the BCD ring system well positioned to get to the final target. Taking a closer look at the skeletal rearrangement, we can see how the triflate group can leave to generate a secondary carbocation, which can undergo a wagner mirwine rearrangement to form a tertiary carbocation. That tertiary carbocation can be attacked at the allylic position by DMSO to generate this adduct, which can undergo a sworn type oxidation to arrive at the enone product. Now, to install the alkene that they would need to close up the remaining F ring, they started by treating with tips triflate and triethylamine, followed by DMDO, which resulted in this gamma oxidation. This happened by generation of the dienol silyl ether, which could be oxidized from the convex face to arrive at the product. A sworn oxidation led to the ketone which could be treated with tosyl hydrazine and subjected to a loose reduction to form an easy mixture of hydrozones from the ketone in the southwest, while the ketone in the northwest was reduced to the secondary alcohol diastereoselectively. In the loose reduction, the dimethyl ketal is proposed to sterically block the bottom face of the carbonyl undergoing the reduction. Carrying on this easy mixture of hydrozones, catechol borin was used to reduce the hydrozones and enable an allylic diazine rearrangement which resulted in a migration of the alkene to the desired position in the product. Now, the northwest secondary alcohol was methylated using sodium HMDS and iodomethane, the dimethyl ketal was deprotected to the ketone with acid, and after neutralization with sodium bicarbonate, diastereoselective reduction with sodium borohydride resulted in the product shown. Now, the authors were able to use mercury acetate and acetic acid to carry out the effering formation, which resulted from the formation of the aminium cation and cyclization, followed by trapping of the resulting carbocation to form the tertiary acetate. Finally, an aqueous deprotection of the acetate group resulted in the completion of the total synthesis of talotisamine. That was a really incredible synthetic effort, and I thoroughly enjoyed seeing how this group tackled a very challenging target. Thank you for watching this episode. If you enjoyed it, please support us by liking and subscribing, and feel free to send us any questions and comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time!